Plenty Valley FM presents Sig's Flicks. Well, we're on air now with Sig Anderson and it's time for the cinema information. How are you, Sig? I'm good, I'm good. And finally, we've had the release very recently of one of the biggest films of the year, Martin Scorsese's back with his new one, Killers of the Flower Moon. And this mm-hmm. is quite a long, drawn-out and an enthralling modern western, I think you might find. And uh, Scorsese's put a lot of time and work into this one over many years, and uh, he's uh, done very well. Just, just on 80 years old, he's <laughs> quite a director. He's done some very good work. Uh, we have this set in Oklahoma back in the 1920s, and it comes in on almost three and a half hours. There's been a lot of criticism about this film, possibly too long, but he's defended this by saying, you know, well, people, you binge out on things at home and you, you know, see a lot of a, a lot of films and do a lot of time in this, and he thinks it's, it's not particularly a problem. And it, it does a bit long. It is a bit long and, and does uh, uh, get to you a bit, but there's so much in it, and he's got a lot about what is going on here. But uh, this is basically the story of the Osage Indians in Oklahoma who were uh, dispossessed and relocated into Oklahoma. And they, at the time, back in the late 18th, late 19th century, and um, then in the early 1920s, they ended up in um, Oklahoma. And they, um, this is uh, where the Indians were put, and they discovered, unfortunately, for a lot of people, but very fortunately for the Indians, uh, they were put them right on top of a uh, serious oil, oil reservation, and they discovered oil, and for a while they became some of the richest people on the planet, and uh, it was a very, very good luck for them. However, uh, it attracted a lot of unsavory people in to try and get their money, as you can imagine. It was an amazing opening scene. Where they, when they discover oil and it shoots out of the ground, it's uh, it's uh, quite a celebration as they're dancing in the oil there, and it's it's uh, pretty good. It's filmed by Mexican cinematographer Rodrigo Perito, and he's worked with Martin Scorsese a lot, the director, like uh, The Wolf of Wall Street and uh, The Irishman. You may remember earlier, and also he filmed, believe it or not, uh, Barbie. <laughs> oh, I say, quite a varied cinematographer. But um, this film just uh, does so well at going over the plight of the Indians and of the, uh, say, um, the unexplained, in many ways, before they were investigated, deaths of many of the Indians in order to get the money that they, mm. uh, a lot of people came in and wanted. And how did that eventuate and get, from it, uh, get through uh, the various things? Well, uh, we have... Um, so at the very early on in the film, we've got young Leonardo DiCaprio, and he is just back from World War One, in, in the early 1920s, and he goes to meet his uncle, Robert De Niro, who is a, a rich cattle baron, <laughs> and um, they, uh, he is organized to or, uh, do some jobs around for him, and uh, he's a real a conniving person and, and manipulates people around a lot, and is easily... Um, influenced over Leonardo DiCaprio. It's good to see these two very good actors together in this one. Martin Scorsese got them together, I think, for the second time ever, believe it or not, uh, with him. So it's, uh, it's, it's quite good. And he, uh, he has a plan to marry one of the uh, Indian women, who, and then he'll in, they will inherit the oil money. And so um, Leonardo DiCaprio is, uh, goes along with this and was organized of this thing to sort of um, build a relationship with her. And in the end, he actually um, really, really does like her and organizes um, things with her. And uh, the way it happens is um, the whole film is organized around um, Leonardo DiCaprio and and, and this woman and how they they get together and and, uh, virtually their love story. But but mostly it's the uh, behind the scenes and uh, manipulative work of uh, Robert De Niro and his character and going through the various things. And we find out how this happens 
um, and how they how they go through the various things to try and organize um, to get the money. And this again, as you say in the um, in the title, um, we have um, several of these Indians die suspiciously, sometimes of a of a unexplained wasting disease, as they call it. Sometimes they're just out and out shot, and they try to cover the the murders that way, and it, it gets pretty gruesome. And as 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 a, as a normal Scorsese film, this is the way it works sometimes, and uh, you can see how it works with them, and you can see how it develops. There's a lot of real interesting things here. Uh, we saw a lot of this film is extended out by showing some of the cultures of some of the Osage people, uh, this, the, uh, uh, this, um, these Indian uh, organizations, and uh, American, Native American Indians. And it's, um, it's intriguing the way they go this. And they, they know something's up, and they're, they're still they are sometimes powerless to do something about it. And uh, they hire private investigators, and sometimes they don't work. And uh, it's a real conniving thing mm. happening. Big, big money certainly has a lot of push and a lot of, yeah. It is, yeah. And um, they, uh, it's incredible scenes early on where we have, when some of this money comes in, we've got Indians going around in brand new cars. This is the 1920s. There's not a lot of cars around, and the only the rich people have cars, and they, they've got very, uh, very big houses, and they've got white chauffeurs, and things are a little bit backwards. <laughs> and mm. people sometimes look at it that way, um, as it as it normally is. So um, the way things go there, it's, it's incredible. Um, we have um, Leonardo DiCaprio's Indian wife, Molly, is as diabetic, and so he uh, looks after her that way and and then she's uh, slowly dying through, through mysterious circumstances i'm going to not say anything about that until you see the film and um we have uh leonardo DiCaprio who uh, tries his best to support her or is he complicit we don't know what's going on here so uh there's a later on in the piece we do have help from an investigator from the bureau and of investigation way back in Washington. This is a long way back in those days from Oklahoma, and uh, that later becomes the FBI. And um, he is quite good as the investigator. That was the role that was originally meant to go to Leonardo DiCaprio before he became um, the, help, the uh, nephew of Robert De Niro. All right. But, uh, there's a lot of incredible things. The uh, Real interesting actor, acting roles are lawyers later on in the piece uh, from Brendan Fraser has come back uh, after a very successful film, The Wild, and also John Lithgow uh, with that very distinctive voice of his. So they're very good. The music of this is just wonderful. They have sort of old-time music and some uh, Indian music a bit as well, and also some early American uh, jazz and uh, folk music mm. through this. And uh, it's... Uh, Real, real good. So, and some people may think it's a bit long, but I think it's a, it's an amazing film. It's uh, a lot in it, a lot to go through, and it's worth the wait. And definitely want to see this film before uh, it goes to streaming because it films like this are meant to play up on the big screen. Yes, definitely. It's called Killers of the Flower Moon. Is it? I see this one. I don't um, really like too much violence in movie. I'm not a violent person in you know that way. But is it? really awful? I mean, sounds. I'd love to go to this movie. Um, there are scenes of violence in some Scorsese films. You know, we got... Uh, it's not overly so, but there are uh, things that happen. And as Scorsese himself has said, these things happen. We don't want to turn away. They are a part of, uh, of what we are, and uh, these things need to be exposed. Yeah. So it's... Uh, there are uh, some uh, violent scenes, uh, but not too many. All right. and, uh, it's all part of the fabric of this, uh, the way it goes. Okay. But, um, yeah, so that's that one. So anybody who's like me and doesn't like too much violence but wants to yeah. see a movie like this, it's worth it then. Mm. Do we have a few messages or will I go on? Yes, some time for some messages. Nearly 71% of parents know that their kids are not confident swimmers and nearly half of all parents don't get them swimming lessons. 
Spring and summer is when kids are at drowning risk because the weather warms up and they want to jump in the pool. The 0 to 5 year old area is the really big high risk. Some key things to check are the fence and the gates. Is the gate self closing? Does the magna latch work? Is the area clear of items that would help get a kid entry like a table they could jump on to get over the fence? Make your pool safe for summer. And you gotta see, this is my local news and local views on your local station, 88.6 Plenty Valley FM. This is your city. Well, we're back on air with Sig Anderson and been talking about, um, what was it again, the death of the flower moon. Was that it? Killers of the flower moon. Killers of, yeah. Okay, that's definitely a movie to look out for and I don't care if it's three and a half hours. It sounds like a fascinating subject. Mm, yeah, almost three, three, almost three, three hours 20, but uh, yeah, it's very good. Another quick one I have uh, to mention is uh, The Origin of Evil. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, fine. This one comes in just over two hours, and this is a, an intriguing film, French film, and uh, it's French Canadian actually, and an interesting thriller starring Laurie Calamy, and she's a wonderful actor, up and coming French actor. You may remember from Antoinette to Servanese. Uh, it's a very good, uh, very good film. She's in that comedy and playing uh, with a, um, going on a trek uh, with a very, very uh, stubborn donkey. Nice film you might want to check out. But this one is an incredible story where uh, we have this woman just released from prison, and she's very keen to track down her uh, long lost the father who uh, never married the mother and hasn't seen him a long time and wants to trace him down and uh, to meet him. And he's got a bit of money, owns a few restaurants, and he's organized around a few things. And he also has. Uh, is happy to meet his uh, long lost illegitimate daughter, and yet he has uh, he's married and has a, another daughter as well. And they're very suspicious of this new woman that comes in and sort of uh, makes friends with him. And he's very suspicious of the daughter and the um, the wife because everyone, of course, once again, like the previous film, they want his money, and things go a bit crazy from there. And um, the is this woman, you know. Uh, really who she is and uh, she's a very very nice very wonderful they want to work out whether or not you know she's the real deal because they're very suspicious of her and the husband the father wants to protect um uh, his uh estate and, and his holdings from the others so it's a bit of a family thing that goes from there and it's intriguing the way that works out and at the time she's a uh, very uh, a little bit dismissive of her best friend still back in prison and she's organized tries to organize these things and a bit helpless from there so uh, but once again it's called the origin of evil uh new french film at top now you might want to check that out so a couple of films for you guys to check out and uh i hope you can see those films and uh, real quick i can't say anything about this one uh we're out of time but the greek film festival is screening now is going right through this week. You might want to check that out at greekfilmfestival.com.au As you can imagine, lots of Greek films at uh, the Como, Bowen and Astor Cinema. So, lots of films for you guys to see, Hilary. Thank you very much, Sig. You've been listening to your local station, 88.6 Plenty Valley FM with Valley Lifestyles and see you next week.